Hey everyone, Samsung had a big day today revealing four Galaxy phones, three of which were the S20 and one of them is the Galaxy Z Flip. Let's take a look at the three Galaxy S20 phones and see what's different and what's uh, identical about these three. So we've got an assortment of colors, starting with the cloud pink, the cloud blue, and the cosmic gray. There's also a cosmic black. I'm just gonna call them pink, blue, gray, and black. Now, the pink is only available on the Galaxy S20, not on the higher ones, whereas there is no pink on this. There, the, the Ultra only comes with gray and black. Those are the only two color choices that you have in the Middle East. Looking at the design of the phones, they kind of look a bit like the Galaxy S10, a more refined version of it. Let me just here just rotate that. So the curve screen is slightly less curved hopefully what that means is that you won't have any accidental touches that I've faced a lot of issues with on the Galaxy S10 series uh, sadly there is no flat version like the Galaxy S10e which was one of my favorite devices from last year's model so we don't have a fully flat version but the curves are less pronounced so hopefully they're gonna be a lot more touch friendly the bigger picture is 5G this year, where Samsung's bringing 5G to two of these in the Middle East. So the Galaxy S20 will not have a 5G version, but the S20 Plus and the S20 Ultra will have 5G versions. In fact, the Ultra only comes in 5G, you won't be able to get it in LTE at all. So as far as the screen sizes are concerned, 6.2 inches on the S20, 6.7 inches on the S20 Plus, and 6.9 inches on the S20 Ultra. All of them support 120 Hz display refresh, which means that they're going to be extremely fluid and smooth when you're scrolling through, uh, scrolling through all the different list items or just browsing, navigating through the phone. The battery capacity on each of these phones also relates to the size. So you've got 4,000 milliamp hour battery on the smaller one, the S20, 4,500 on the middle one, the S20 Plus, and then finally 5,000 milliamp hour battery on the S20 Ultra, which should easily last you a day, maybe even two days. We'll test that out once we get the review sample in. All three of these phones are powered by the Exynos 990 processor, but they do differ in terms of storage and RAM. Uh, the Galaxy S20 has eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, whereas the S20 Plus will be available with eight gigs and 128, as well as a 512 gig variant. The Ultra, on the other hand, also has a 16 gig, 512 gig variant and a 128 gig variant. The big story here are the cameras. Samsung's worked really hard with the cameras and we're expecting these cameras to be like top of the line, probably the best cameras that we've seen so far. Obviously we need to review to test how good these cameras are, but uh, let's have a look now. Looking at these two, they've got a 12 megapixel primary sensor, whereas this one has a phenomenal 108 megapixel primary sensor, which is insane. Uh, these two phones are capable of what Samsung's calling a hybrid optical zoom, whereas this one can go up to a hybrid optical zoom of 10x, which again should, be, should allow you to zoom into a picture crop a picture and get really something best out of that. Coming to the video, all of these phones can shoot at 8K video, so it allows you some more creative freedom as well. If you want to shoot, crop, zoom, whatever else that you want to do on videos, they should allow for some, some good experiences on there. Now, obviously, this one featuring the 108 megapixel has a bit of a camera bump. You obviously need some tech to go in there, which kind of raises a little bit of a bump on there. Um, you know what? I honestly don't mind it. It's there. It's not like I'm going to be looking at this. I'm going to be looking at, uh, you know, the front side of the phone and the screen, which is just phenomenal, gorgeous is what I'm going to be looking at. So that doesn't really bother me much, but uh, you should be able to get some fantastic shots uh, night wise as well. Uh, let me just go ahead and open up the camera UI over here. And my favorite feature is single take that Samsung announced on stage today. I obviously need to play around with it, but with this, what you do is you take a 10 second video and that 10 second video then automatically using AI gives you your best shots whether it's an ultra wide picture or whether it's a smart crop whether it's a filtered photo or whether it's a short clip it will basically use AI and give you the best shots out of those 10 seconds of video that it took so you literally just need to keep your phone on that just take all of your shots using that mode and you're pretty much going to be set with whatever kind of framing that you need from them. Pricing on these phones is slightly higher than last year's model. So the S20 starts at $31.99, whereas the S20 Plus starts at $35.99. And finally, the S20 Ultra starts at $44.99, which is for the 128 gig version. If you do want to get the 512 gig version, it's going to run up to 5,299 dirhams. So that's a quick look at the new S20 phones that Samsung announced today. We're super excited and we can't wait to have them in our office to test them out. The camera is something that I'm really keen on testing, but uh, I think the design is nice, the battery life is nice, is nice, the specs are nice, and you know, Samsung's really stretched whatever they could do out of current mobile phones. This is Abba signing out. Stay tuned to TechRadar for a full review.